Hey everyone, welcome to Hominid. This is a channel about optimizing human potential. And this is the second part of our nootropics guide. Today we're going to be talking about acetylcholine. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and let's jump into it. Okay, so before we start this, I have to give the disclaimer that I am not a doctor. Uh, none of this advice should be taken as a substitute for medical advice. You should go and consult with your doctor before you take any of these supplements or do any of the things that I mention in this video. So what is acetylcholine? Um, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter in the brain uh, that plays a main role in memory, attention, and learning, among other things like motivation. Um, and it's processed from choline in the body. So when you eat foods like eggs that have a lot of choline in it, your body processes the choline into acetylcholine. So acetylcholine deficiency. Um, this is when obviously when you're low in acetylcholine. So this causes bad memory recall. It causes decreased verbal fluency, for example, like when you can't think of words. Um, when you can't think of something to say in a conversation. Uh, and it causes inhibited learning, um, makes it difficult to learn th new things. And it uh, decreases your processing speed, which basically means it's kind of like the verbal fluency thing. Like if you're in a conversation, it takes longer for you to come back with something to say. Okay, so acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, that's a long word. But what it means is it's something that inhibits the breakdown of acetylcholine in your brain. The majority of nootropics that are gonna boost your acetylcholine are gonna work by this mechanism. Um, yeah, it's basically a chemical that inhibits the enzyme that is responsible for breaking down acetylcholine. And what this does is it causes a higher level of acetylcholine in the brain due to acetylcholine having a longer duration. Okay, so supplements. Quick note, it's best to take some form of choline supplement along with any of these uh, supplements because uh, if you take a choline esterase inhibitor and you don't actually have choline to produce uh, acetylcholine in your brain, uh, it's just not going to work. Uh, you can also get choline from food sources as well, but if you're not eating those kinds of foods, it's pointless to take a choline esterase inhibitor. Um, so huperzine A is a choline esterase inhibitor uh, that's it's found in um, the supplements Alpha Brain and Optimine. These are just two really popular nootropic, nootropic stack supplements that are uh, available. Um, if you watch the Joe Rogan podcast, you probably know about Alpha Brain. Um, and the others are the Racetam. So Racetam's Paracetam, Aniracetam, Nupept, uh, Oxiras, I think Oxiras, is Oxiracetam the same thing as Nupept? I'm not sure. But all of these are um, choline esterase inhibitors. I find personally that the racetams don't work as quickly as Huprazine A does. I find that Huprazine A for me typically works immediately, um, whereas the racetams, which are more of a chemical compound, whereas Huprazine A is a organic compound, um, well, they're both chemical compounds, but you know what I'm getting at. The racetams, for whatever reason, take you have to take them longer. Um, I, I think it takes like three weeks at least to see the effects of the racetams, and you have to take it every day, three times a day. Um, whereas huprazine, I personally notice effects the same day I take it, even if I haven't taken it the day before or, or even a week before. Um, I notice the effects of huprazine A immediately, and I notice I know this because I've I've taken too much huprazine A before and gotten muscle cramps, and we're going to talk about that later. But that's how I know that it works because that's a symptom of early choline uh, crisis. So, yeah, like I said, huprazine A is actually a plant, and the racetams are a man-made compound. So that's the difference there. I'm not saying that racetams are bad. They work for a lot of people, but uh, for me, I found huprazine A works better. 
so food sources for choline okay um, eggs are a great source for choline um, beef is also a good source for pretty much everything but yeah especially choline dairy has choline uh, broccoli is a good source broccoli also has some really other good uh, anti-cancer things as well um, I recommend broccoli sprouts uh, cauliflower same deal kale um, okay so warning uh, too much acetylcholine can be a problem uh, it can cause muscle cramps can cause nausea and it can cause even more severe symptoms if you get a lot of acetylcholine you don't want that this is called choline crisis so make sure you research any new chemical that you put into your body to make sure that it doesn't interact with anything else you're taking you want to do that anytime you're, you're taking a new supplement even if it's a vitamin vitamins you know can cause problems too uh, also if you're taking huperzine a I highly recommend because it's so quick acting that you cycle off of it very often um, I would say probably at least every like once a week just don't take it for a day at least I don't take it for two days in a row it stays in the system for 24 hours so what this can do is it builds up acetylcholine in the brain and this can lead to choline crisis so in the next video we're gonna be talking about dopamine how you get motivation and we're gonna be talking about what it is what it does we're gonna be going more in depth into it and how to supplement it and that's it thanks for watching please leave a like comment subscribe I'll see you in the next video thanks <laughs>